So we already learned that by setting the item source of our list view to some I enumerable, we are able to start listing elements inside of it. However, we have set the item source, but we haven't tell the list view how is it supposed to display the items. That is why the items appear entirely empty. To be able to tell the list view how it should display the items, we should create the item template. So the list view is going to contain an item template property that we need to set. Without it, the list view has no idea at all how do we want to display the items. So we need to define the template for its items like this. And inside the item template, we are going to need to define a data template. Now, I don't want to get too deep into what the data template and data binding and bindings are yet. For now, let's just say that the data template is how this item template is going to show data to the user. And now that we have these and data template, the next thing that we have to do in this case is set what type of cell we're going to be displaying. And what I want to do is just use a text cell, simply a text cell. Now in the text cell, we happen to have a text, the text property that is going to allow us to display something. Now, I again, don't want to get too deep into what we're doing here. For now, let's just go ahead and write binding. For now, let's just leave it like this. Now, this is what is happening by default if we don't change anything. If we don't add all of these that we just added, this is what the list view is doing by default. What we have to do is tell it that it doesn't have to bind to the entire object. So this is what, what's happening. When the list view gets the source in the form of a list of contacts, each contact is going to be inside of a text cell and more particularly inside of its text. So because the contact is not a string, this cannot be displayed. So all we have to do is actually write the name of one of the contact properties after the binding. So let's say that we want the text of the text cell to display the name. All we do is grind binding space and name. And magically, if we run this on the simulator. Now the text cell should know how to display the name because the name is a text. It is a string and you can see immediately how, okay, the text cell now knows how to use a string to display a string because of course, right? So this is it is for us to start displaying those items here and the emulator is hard to grab by the way but this is is how you can start displaying the information on those contacts now of course we have a lot more information that we have and that we are not displaying and you could always create your own custom cell instead of a text cell that would be a view cell by the way but that is something that I cover in a different course. What you can do, however, is use the detail. The detail is another text or another label that can be displayed inside of the text cell. And what I can do is set a binding to a different property. Let's say that I want to bind the email. And to make this a bit more fun, let's actually change the text color. And uh, I don't know, let's just use one of the predefined one of course you can always define your own coloring here but now if we run this we should not only see the text but we should see the detail with the email and the text should be a different color as you can see in here now we see that small detail label below the name or in this case the text label binded to whatever is in the email. And of course, just as we have access to the text color, we have access to the detail color. 
so we wanted this to be blue or any color again you can set whatever color you want you can do so so there you have it this is pretty much everything that we needed to do with this application and inside of these curves of course this is a very easy introduction to the curves i do encourage you to take a look at the next lecture where i talk about what else you can learn with xamarin because you pretty much can do anything with xamarin thank you so much for watching this curse i hope that you have learned the basics i think i talked about why i wanted to create this curse in the first place i really hope that this has been useful for at least one person out there again congratulations for completing this curse and I will see you in the next lecture, which is the last lecture of this course.